Okay. Well, they're always interesting. Um, but we have it's we have the three of cups, which is about celebration. And we have and I knew I just felt when these two cards are together, they're both threes. One's the three of cups, one's the three of swords. One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, so let me grab my wand. <clears throat> Happiness, joy, celebration. It could be a number of things. Getting together with friends, old friends you haven't seen in a while, parties uh, coming up, um, religious um, and or spiritual gatherings. It could be that. And then here's the Three of Swords that says, but my heart has been broken or I've, um, hmm, how do I want to say this with this particular card? I almost don't want to look at this. The textbook is <clears throat> getting over a broken heart. See how the, the clouds are uh, on top of and the rain's coming down on this particular heart and the swords are going through it. Now the swords represent our ideas and our thoughts. More in this particular reading would be our worries and our concerns. These are for this is for the last two weeks of September. So <clears throat> if you feel like that you've either had a relationship in the past or it's one in the present, it's not working out, and or you think about someone from the past or you're concerned about someone that's either in your future, it just feels like, you know, you're, it's, it's upsetting to you. I just want to say, and again, this is for Taurus, Sun, Moon, and Rising. If this, if these messages don't resonate, watch your Moon and Rising, because that completes the story anyway. This is a general reading. But, you know, a lot of times, you know, life is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, of course. And, the issues that come up will make us stronger and motivated or they will bring us down and defeated. So we have a choice here, don't we? So we can, we can look at the down times and say, okay, how can I learn from this? How can I grow from this? How can I take my next step forward? Because oftentimes the next step forward is a new creative way of living or thinking or um, growing. Okay, so I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying... Because I feel like there's there is celebration, and it may be somebody within the celebration that maybe has been sick. I don't know. There just feels like there's some concern and worry, and good tidings both. You know, we can have positive days and we can have negative days as well. And I don't mean negative and bad. Just we don't feel quite as bright and cheerful. Okay, let's look at the last two weeks, or excuse me, the first two weeks of October which are both core cards. We have the Page of Cups and the King of Swords. Well, what's really funny is this is the Three of Cups, and this lines up under the, the with the page, and then the Sword cards here, we have the King. So two cups, two, king, two swords. Okay, so the Page of Cups represents to me, it could be a child. This could be a very creative, happy, social, um, inventive, all over the place. I don't want to say all over the place. That would be more like a fire sign <laughs> or not. Um, but this would be some, like a child who would be very creative and, and um, intuitive. You might find these intuitive. But, you know, also it's about bringing news of something that makes you happy. A pro it can be, it's not the night, but it's just kind of like, He's a young dude. Young dudes bring news. So um, a creative venture that comes your way. Um, it could be a social invitation. It could be a proposal of marriage or, or you're hearing about a proposal of marriage and it makes you happy, possibly for a friend, possibly for a relative. Something's coming up, though, that's going to feel good to you. This King of Swords... He represents a lot of intellectual stability. Intellectual stability. He is like a professor. He would be like a um, a business owner who makes decisions quickly. He leans to the left a little bit. 
So he's not so strict in his ways as the queen. You know, the queen is sharp and she's definite and she uh, uses her mind quite a bit. The king is settled on his throne. And I'm not saying anything against the queen. I'm just saying the differences in the two. And this card represents an air sign. That would be Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius, sun, moon, or rising. So who in your life, because I'm not sure that these cards, this could be this person here that you're concerned about or that you've been in a rela relationship with, or this person could come into your life and say, this is what I think you should be doing. They might be very opinionated, but I don't think so much so. I think that they're going to be more... Um, uh, tender than than um, than they are going to be stern. I think they're going to be more balanced, and I think this king could give you some awfully good advice because you have something coming up here that's like a child, and you're this is emotional. This is an emotional feeling. This is very much an intellectual mind feeling, making decisions feeling sharp about your decisions. So maybe something comes up and then you're like, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take on this new project. I'm going to move. I'm going to take on this opportunity. I'm going to go out with this person and, and have a good time. Um, you know, many of those things can come up. So let's take a look at the transition card for you guys. It's interesting, the hanged man. And the hanged man represents a time period, a trans transition period, when we're looking at things, looking at our life, uh, or some, some situation in our life, in 180 degree different than what it normally is. You could be flip-flopping and saying, well, no, wait a minute, I've totally changed my mind. I'm not going to stay in this relationship or be hurt by this. I'm going to figure out how I can stand up and dance and have the light around me. And that opens you up to social invitations to this possibly air sign and or you're being very, um, again, mentally balanced, feeling focused and, and mentally balanced. So I like the hanged man actually, you know, he's, it, I want to put him this way because he does, he, he, it's not like anyone's doing this to him. He is taking a self imposed timeout, and that timeout can be a week, a day, or an hour, and meditating and reflecting on and saying, What can I do differently? Not dwelling in the past, not going, Oh, why didn't I make it this way? Why didn't I choose that way? Why did I say the things I did? This is more about. What can I do to shine more light on myself, to let myself feel lit up so that I can make things happen? All right, Taurus. Okay, I'm going to add up the cards. And if you all, you know, have any questions, you want your own personal private reading, <clears throat> look in the See More section below. The link to my website is down there that goes straight to my order page. And of course, you can browse around my website as well. But I'm feeling like a lot of you Torians are more than any other sign I've done. I think you're my ninth sign for this particular series. And, uh, you know, nine is also the number of numerology of endings so that new beginnings can come. Um, nine life paths understand compassion and completion. They've seen a lot of drama trauma in their life. I understand that. So just saying, there's a lot going on for you guys, and I, but I feel like looking at it in a positive way will bring positive reinforcement. Okay, so like I said, if you'd like to order a reading, you know how to do so. Go in the see more section. Let's add these up, three and three is six. And those are two, you know, 33 in numerology. Let me go do this for a minute. 33 in numerology is a master number. So I do feel like there's something about these two cards that are saying, fulfill your heart, fulfill your needs. Uh, master number of creativity is the master number of, I call it heart of God. So if you have that number in your uh, birth, then, you know, that would be interesting to put down below. 
So three and three is six, and six and 12 is 18, 19, 20. Let's come up one other sign. Well, 20 in numerology, just FYI, I'm talking about numerology a lot, but FYI, anyone who's born on the 20th, you are someone who is really good as a speaker in front of other people. I didn't look at my crystal either. I want to do that before we go. Uh, a speaker in front of other people because 20s are very genuine, very charming. And a lot of times I'll say that to people and they're sort of like, ooh, they're, you know, like, I don't know. I've always wanted to do that, but I'm, I'm not very good at that. Well, yes, you are because you're, you're not boisterous or boisterous. You're very, um, you know, people want to see speakers that come from their heart, and the, the 20s do. All right, so that's that's what that's about. And, of course, two in numerology represents partnership. So some of you could be seeing some partnerships come up and diplomatic relationships. Okay, and the 20 in the uh, Major Arcana is the Judgment card. So this has to do with, you know, the day of reckoning, what we've seen that has worked and what we have seen that's not worked and taking what has and, and really eyeballing it. And, and it's like, wow, this is, this is amazing. It's, it's, it's the rebirth. If you think of the card, the judgment card, it normally has um, a people standing in water looking up to the angel above them. And so they're seeing that their life has been a movie. And here those are. They're seeing their life has been a movie and how they can um, use that movie to further their life. And they're talking to the angel. They're talking to the universe. What can, what, what can I do, universe? So if you have, you know, spirit guides, or you know your spirit guides around you, if your angels or you talk to the archangels, this would be an awesome time to do so, as always.